Hey guys, my name is Jack of Jackson Crossley FX and today I'm going to show you how to improve the look of a vortex render that has been outputted from Cinema 4D with Octane Render. Obviously, the difference between these two images is absolutely phenomenal, so I can't wait to delve into this with you guys. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So first of all, I'm going to begin with the raw render out of Cinema 4D. Here we have the raw render, and quite frankly, it's underwhelming. You know, we've got this ugly black dot right at the end. We've got these random toruses that just look out of place. There's no color. It's, it's literally grayscale. <laughs> it's overall a very underwhelming image. If you didn't understand the visual effects workflow, you'd probably agree with me and you say, oh yeah, Jack, that sucks. You suck at VFX, quit. My answer to you would be, I'm not going to quit. And I'll tell you why. In visual effects, once we've outputted the raw render, we always open up a compositing software such as After Effects and the Foundry Nuke. Those programs essentially allow us to manipulate the image just to create a more immersive experience for the viewer. So of course, before you render this out, you need what is called a ZDEF pass. So the first thing you need to do is go to Octane Render right here, and you want to enable the Render AOV group. For the format, you want EXR and the 32-bit. You also want to choose the WAB DWAB because it's just a smaller file size than some of the other compression models. Then what you've got to do is you've got to click on the Render AOV Manager and add what is called a ZDEF pass. You can mess with the values. I recommend just copying them if you've got a similar uh, Vortex style to mine. So once you've done that, you can go ahead, select your directory and render. So once you've rendered a few frames out, you'll get two types of files, your main render and your ZDEF pass. Now there are multiple passes, so the more passes you add, the, the more files you're going to have. Now you've got to open up After Effects, and this is where the fun begins. So I'm just going to solo the original main render. So of course, like we said before, we've got this ugly dot basically right at the end, which looks really, really, well, quite frankly, unrealistic and also just plain ugly so there is a way to fix this so what you got to do you've got to import your zdef pass and when you import that you need to add an effect called the extractor you then click on the little arrow and click the letter y and essentially what that does is it inverts the image as the actual pass is completely inverted when you import it into after effects so you just got to do a little bit of conversion stuff there but that's all good it's pretty simple so once you've done that, you want to create a solid. Now, personally, for the solid, you want to create a sort of gray, maybe hazy blue color, because this is going to act as a fog. So in this, you're going to add an effect called the gradient wipe. And essentially what this does, I'll show you right now, is you can edit the transition completion, which are basically determines the proximity of the fog and of course the softness as well which is a little bit like feather when you use masks so once you've done that of course you need to go to the gradient layer and you've got to select your z depth pass right here and also you've got to ensure that effects and masks is selected as well once you've done that you'll get something like this of course it still looks pretty really because there's no color there's no motion blur it just looks plain unnatural this is where adjustment layers come in. It's always important to use adjustment layers as it creates a non-destructive workflow. So I can add a load of effects without them directly affecting the lower layers. You want to create yourself an adjustment layer and of course it looks vastly different uh, but I'm going to turn off all of these effects and go through them one by one. So the first thing I always add is an optics compensation. Obviously when you add it you're going to have this weird sort of CRT looking effect. You're going to want to invert that to create a more immersive effect the next effect you want is the curves effect now because this is a 32-bit exr sequence we've got a lot of data and the black and white values are spread over a you know a vast amount a vast array if you if you will so, so we get quite a middle gray looking image so all we got to do is we just got to lower the blacks. That's all we've got to do. And that just adds a little bit of contrast back into the image. You also want to open the scopes as well and ensure that there's a little, there's a faint black line below there. You don't exactly want the blacks to be pure black. You just want them to be 
essentially dark grey. So now we've got a little bit more contrast. We've got the Optus compensation working, creating a, you know, an immersive sort of experience for the viewer. Um, but there's still something off, and that is the fact that there's there's literally no color. So all you gotta do is add an effect called Video Copilot Color Vibrance. Now this is actually a plugin, so you're gonna need to download this uh, on videocopilot.net. Don't worry, it's free. All you gotta do is download it and put it in the plugins folder for After Effects. I'll put the path in the description down below. So when you add the color vibrance, you get this eyedropper tool and a color picker. Now this works in hexadecimal uh, with a little hash right here. Personally, for this project, I wanted to go for a sort of hazy sort of blue. And even at this point, oh, there's still something wrong with this render. It still looks unnatural. The toruses, which are supposed to be energy fields, still look out of place. That's partly due to the fact that this is a still frame because I haven't finished rendering the sequence. But this is also that we haven't actually added any motion blur. So all you gotta do, especially if you don't have any motion blur, is add what's called a radial blur. So there you go, it looks a lot better. We've got these, these energy sort of fields are now blurred and look a lot nicer, a lot more pleasing to the eye than before. There's before, there's after. You can definitely see an improvement because this is how vortexes are supposed to look. What I like to add, especially when I've rendered a sequence that moves, of course, there's a sequence, is a turbulent displace and that just creates more organic feeling. In Cinema Footy, I've already animated the noise with an espresso tag. Um, that's for a whole nother video, but stay tuned. But the turbulent displace just adds a little bit more spice. Just think of it of adding, you know, a bit of salt to your fish and chips, for instance. So once you've enabled this, you, you get this sort of warpy looking, uh, looking effect. Now, if you don't know what turbulent displace is, then you really shouldn't be watching this video because you're clearly inexperienced. But this is one of the easiest effects to understand, really. You have created what looks like a pretty nice image of a vortex. Of course, even with all of these effects enabled, because we added an adjustment layer, this is all non-destructive. So I can go back into the solid. I can increase the proximity of the fog if I so wanted to. You know, I could have it right up against your face like that. And that's the beauty of using adjustment layers. I hope this enlightened you in terms of, you know, how to make your images look decent for once. And I'll see you in the next video. But for now, goodbye. <laughs>